Sophia, wet floor. I can't do that on command. I have to be scared first. <laughs> oh, Julie, wet floor. What, somebody scared Sophia? <laughs> Well, don't you look nice? It's taken two years, but as of today, I will have lost 140 pounds of ugly fat. You used to be heavy? No, married. <laughs> yeah, today's the day that Chewie signs his final divorce papers. Oh, I bet you have mixed feelings about that. Are you kidding? I'm thrilled it's over. Eight years. Eight long, miserable years. <laughs> you know what it's like to live with a foul mouthed vicious shrew for eight years? Move it or lose it, you Danish dog. <laughs> I guess you do. <laughs> Girls, Dorothy just called from the airport. She's on her way. Can you believe it? Our little family's gonna be together again. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I can't wait for her to see the hotel. Oh, Sophia, you must be so excited. Absolutely. I haven't seen my baby in four months. I'm living for the moment when I can see her and kiss her and hold her in my arms. I can hardly think of anything else. She's not staying in my room, is she? <laughs> Sophia, the hotel's booked solid for the next two days. Honey, I'd let her bunk with me, but I have a big date tonight, and you know how Dorothy suffers from motion sickness. <laughs> I'm as thrilled as anyone that Dorothy's coming, but please don't make me share a bed with her again. You remember what happened the last time? You mean when she mistook you for her pillow? Do you know what it's like being fluffed by Dorothy at three in the morning? <laughs> well, I just can't wait for her to get here. She's gonna be so proud when she sees what we've done with this hotel. You know, Roland, she didn't think we'd be able to pull this off. She thought we were too old and inexperienced to run a hotel this big. You know, this is just a stab in the dark, but was Dorothy the smart one in your group? <laughs> hey, Chewy, did you sign those divorce papers? All right, you're free, man. How's it feel? I don't know. You know, when I left the courthouse, I was feeling great, man. I was whistling. <laughs> I threw my hat up in the air just like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> I even started running down the street like that girl. <laughs> I started belly dancing like I dream a genie. Yeah. And then it hit me. You, you need some male role models? <laughs> no, it, it hit me that I really am alone. It's, it's over and Dolores is gone forever. Oh, come on, Chewie. Dolores isn't the only woman out there for you. How do you know? Maybe she is. Man, maybe nobody will ever be interested in me. Man, what you need is a date. Now, look, this is what I want you to do. The next woman you see, I want you to walk up to her and talk to her and just ask her out. I don't know, man. I'm really rusty. No, no, no. no. Trust me, man. Just be aggressive. Well, what's the worst thing she could do? Say no? No, I mean it, Chewie. The next woman. Next woman. Okay. Next woman. Walk up to her and say, hey. The next woman. Say, hey. Do you move as good as you look? Walk away now and no one gets hurt. You must be Dorothy. I've heard a lot about you. I I'm Chewy. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, welcome to the hotel. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. May I help you? I certainly hope so. I'm looking for uh, the people who me. run this. Okay. I was just counting this fare. I think you forgot to add a tip. A tip? A tip. Uh, let's review your performance, shall we? Let's say you backed over my luggage, took the causeway during rush hour, stopped the car twice to sell fruit out of your trunk. A tip? Walk away now and no one gets hurt. You must be Dorothy. <laughs> so nice to meet you. I'm Roland Wilson. Oh, how do yeah. you do? How Boy, do you do? You are nothing at all like I pictured you. Well, what do you mean? Well, it, it's just that from everything that Blanche and Sophia and Rose told me about you, I'd expected you to be, you know, taller. 
Taller. How much taller? About five feet taller, actually. <laughs> Dorothy! Oh, I can't believe you're really Whoa. here. Oh, oh look at look you. you. You never oh, look more beautiful. Oh, God, I missed you guys. Oh, we've been looking oh. forward to this for so long. It's going to be the best three days ever. It does. The three musketeers together yeah. again. Oh. The four musketeers. Oh, Sophia, look, Dorothy's here. Ma. Ma, I'm over here. Get the hell away from me. Pussycat. Oh, isn't this wonderful? We're all back together again. Oh. Group hug, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've never really been as into this as they are. I gotta get back. <laughs> oh, it is so wonderful to see you all again. And the place is beautiful. I can't wait to see my room. Oh, Dorothy, you know we're just booked solid. I hope you don't mind doubling up with one of us. Well, of course not. I'll sleep with Rose. <laughs> no, she has the fluffiest pillows. <laughs> You don't mind, do you, dear? <laughs> oh, that's fine. Well, great. Well, let, let's show you the rest of the hotel. Oh, another group hug! Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Oh, Rose, that guy. Table four asked again where his English muffins are. You tell that ungrateful vermin at table four if he doesn't shut up about his damn muffins, I'll pour hot butter in his nooks and crannies. <laughs> oh, Roland, thank God you're here. That dining room is packed, and Chewy hasn't shown up for work yet this morning. Do you have any idea where he might be? But Chewy's still missing? Oh, no, this is my fault. This is all my fault that he's missing. Why? What are you talking about? Well, he was so depressed about his divorce that I thought I needed to get out, you know, and have some fun, so I took him to the Velvet Slipper last night. God, why would I even take him to such a cheap, sleazy dive? I knew that was you. I knew that was you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you guys. I'm ready to go to the beach. Oh, Dorothy, you know, actually, this isn't a great time. Oh, Chewie didn't show up for work this morning, and we're swamped. All right, I've bust the tables. Ma, what are you doing? This is way too heavy for you. Please, I do it three times a day, every day. I'm used to it. Besides, it's no heavier than you were when you were born. <laughs> Ma, this tub must weigh 30 pounds. That's exactly what the doctor said when he delivered you. <laughs> See, this is not what we had planned for this weekend, but would you mind if we asked you to give us a hand today? Well, honey, of course not. As a matter of fact, I have had a little experience with this. Really? Sure. When I was a little girl, I used to love to pretend I was a waitress, you know. Ma would play along with me, <laughs> pretend to be my customer. I'd serve her dinner, and she'd complain about the service and threaten not to tip. <laughs> we sure had fun. But after a while, she had me playing waitress all the time, you know, when she had a dinner party when a bridge club came over. I mean, I enjoyed it because I, I thought it was a game. I mean, what reason did a five-year-old have for not trusting her own mother? Here we go again. You used me. It was our quality time. Quality time? You referred to me as the help. It was a nickname. On Thursdays, you lent me out to the neighbors. So you learned a trade. Ingratitude, that's all I've gotten from any of my employees. Kids, my kids. All right, sir. Here you go. Hey, excuse me. Aren't you forgetting something? Uh, like what? Aren't you going to say, have a nice day? No. <laughs> Look, in the 45 minutes that I served you, you complained about the food, the coffee, the service, and said that in my case, a sprinkle a day wasn't quite doing the trick. I don't care if you have a pulse, much less a nice day. Then... 
Then you owe me some pie. What? It says at the bottom of the menu, if any waitress after presenting the bill doesn't say have a nice day, she has to give the customer a piece of pie for free. You owe me some pie. This is ridiculous. What idiot would institute a policy like that? Have a nice day. How about this? You tell me to have a nice day now, and I'll skip the piece of pie. Have a nice day. I can't hear you. Have a nice day. Now say it like you mean it. I'll go get your pie. Rose, do we have anything that gets out stains? No, I don't think we do. Why do you ask? Hey, this is my best suit! <laughs> I spilled something. It was the last box of tomatoes. Oh, I'll tell Roland to put it on the order list. Whew. Ma, what's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just catching my breath. Well, I look, I've seen what's been going on around here. Rose and Blanche are working you too hard. Look at you. You're white as a sheet. That's because I'm in between heartbeats. Come back in 15 minutes, I look like the last of the Mohicans. <laughs> Lucas? It's me. Oh, honey, I miss you too. No, no, Ma's okay. Actually, she's not, honey. That's what I'm calling you about. Yeah, remember what we talked about, you know, before I left? Well, after seeing what's going on around here, I think... I think the best thing for Ma is if she comes home to live with us. Man, I called everywhere looking for you. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I was just busy, that's all. Busy doing what? Wait for me, sweetie. Busy getting married. <laughs> Chewy, please tell us that this is a joke. No, it's no joke. Uh, Roland, Rose, Blanche, I'd like you to meet uh, Beverly. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> We met last night at the Velvet Slipper. <laughs> I was behind him in the rumba line. He had the cutest butt I had ever seen. <laughs> oh, please. Is that any reason to marry a man? Yeah, Blanche is right. How could you be so shallow? What about the chest? What about the shoulders? <laughs> oh, Chewy, this is crazy, man. You two don't know anything about one another. That's not true. Chewy and I spent a lot of time talking last night. We told each other our life story. Even though we just met, I know everything there is to know about him. Chewy Castillos, where have you been? Our last name is Castillos. Hey, look, can we all talk about this later, okay? Oh, you stay right there, sweetie. I'll go get the bags. You already have luggage with this woman. <laughs> hey, look, I just got married. Can you guys be a little bit happy for me? Oh, we're sorry, Chewy. So, was it, was it a nice wedding? I guess so. <laughs> I don't remember too much about it. Just we used the tequila worm as a witness. <laughs> Look, that is it. We're going to tell Beverly that this has been one big mistake. We're going to find that worm, get that judge, and have this thing annulled. Now, come on, Chewy. Wait, 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 man. What's all this we business, huh? This is my life and my decision. And I say Beverly and I are going to give this marriage a shot. Come on, you just met her. You haven't even dated her. You don't know anything about her. Marriage is serious. It's not something you just hop into, like a bed. Well, look, I know it's kind of sudden, but uh, who's to say we can't be happy together, huh? I just do not believe this. How could this have happened? Okay, I admit it. I got a little drunk. Drunk? You had one margarita. God, I'd hate to see what happened if you had two. Oh, Chewy, I'm crazy about the new car you bought me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> Good, you're all here. We need to talk. Well, I guess we need to talk. You've been here a whole day, and the four of us haven't had one minute to sit down and gab. No, actually, I want oh, to talk we, to you. We, we're going to be talking about sex, aren't we? Duh. <laughs> what do you say? Should I get out the cheesecake? Duh. Duh. <laughs> I'll get the plates. 
You know, I really have missed you guys. Oh, Dorothy, and we have missed you too. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, this is going to be just like old times. <laughs> okay, now, Dorothy, I want you to tell us everything about the honeymoon. Don't you leave out a thing. Well, we got to the airport late, <laughs> but Lucas managed to find a sky cap. Yeah, yeah, who cares? How was the sex? <laughs> I know it's been a while, but didn't we used to let these stories build a little bit? We were younger. We had more time. How was the sex? Well, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but um, Lucas and I did a little experimenting. Oh. And? Well, I tell you, it was, it was amazing. Oh. I mean, for the first time in my life, I just shed all my inhibitions. I, I, I took risks. I threw caution to the wind. <laughs> what did you do? Well, for starters, I left the lights on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Madonna. <clears throat> well, I know you girls think I'm aggressive, but oh, George was a wild man. He was so impetuous. I remember one night after dinner, he took me right there on the dining room table. Oh, were you surprised? Well, when you've been lying naked on a lazy Susan, you kind of expect a little action. <laughs> Dorothy, you okay? I'm fine. No. I tell you, there's something that I really have to talk to you guys about, and it's just a little difficult for me. Well, for goodness sakes, you never had any problem talking to us before. What's wrong? Well, first of all, let me tell you that I know how difficult this business has been for you, and I think you've just done a terrific job, but, well, it's an awful lot of work. Yeah? So what are you getting at? Well, I think that Ma's much too old to be working this hard, and... I want her to come back to Atlanta with me. What? Well, well, but we need Sophia. We depend on her. I think you depend on her too much. But she enjoys the work. And, and we make sure she doesn't overdo it. Can I say something here? Look, I know that you've done your best, but, <laughs> Rose, if you really care about Ma, you won't fight me on this. Oh, right. And you care so much that this is the first time you've been to visit in four months. Can I say something Look, here? Look, after the wedding, Lucas and I needed some time together. And I thought about Ma every day. Oh, well, I think about Nick Nolte every day. <laughs> that doesn't give me the right to kidnap him, does it? <laughs> does it? Look, I think I know what's best for Ma. Well, we think you don't. Can I say something here? Boy, it just went out of my head. <laughs> Ma! Wait, I remember. If anyone is going to decide where I'm going to live, it's going to be me. Got that? Okay. Where do you want to live? Uh, more importantly, whom do you want to live with? Remember, Ma, one of us is your flesh and blood. Yeah, but also remember that two of us didn't put you in a home. <laughs> Both in your court, pussycat. Look, Ma, just make a decision. And if I can't? Then we'll make it for you. Huh? I need some time. I'm going to my room. I can't believe I'm being forced to choose between the three of you. Hey, morning, Rose. Oh, morning, Chewy. Oh, uh, Rose, I, I want to thank you for yesterday. You know, you were the only one that didn't give me any grief about marrying Beverly. Well, I just figure it's your life. I mean, if you want to throw it away marrying some cheap tart and a drunken stupor, <laughs> who might I object? You're a good friend. <laughs> Has she come down yet? Who? Amelia Earhart Rose. <laughs> Ma, has Ma come down to tell us her decision? No, not yet. Well, then I'm afraid I'm going to have to make the decision for her. She's coming home with me. Dorothy. Look, I'm sorry. I only want what's best for Ma. We all want what's best for her. All right, Dorothy, I hope you're satisfied. Look, don't start again. I've made my decision about Ma. Oh, really? Well, I just went up to her room and her suitcase is gone and this is on her dresser. Well, what does it say? 
I can't choose between my own daughter and two women I think of as daughters. I'm sorry. I just can't. Well, I don't understand. What, is, what does this mean? It means Sophia has run away. stinks. Just three tables all day and I've only made seven dollars in tips. I need to make some money. Maybe I should wear a shorter skirt. Maybe you should just threaten to. <laughs> <laughs> what silly little thing do you need money for now, Sophia? Teeth. Hey, but those teeth look just fine. They're loners. So what happened to your teeth? You may not know this, but a lot of foreign beers don't have twist-off tops. Hey, Chewy, you got any old cans lying around? Uh, yeah, there's some in the recycling bin. Why? Well, I have to raise 50 bucks by Friday. My class is going to Waterworld this weekend, and it costs $25 to get in. Oh. But then why do you need 50? Because. Because why? Because. Ooh, someone's got a girlfriend. <laughs> hey, cut it out, okay? She's just a friend who happens to be a girl. Ooh, someone's got a girlfriend. <laughs> hey, stop it, you guys. What's going on in here? Nothing. Oliver has just decided to raise some money for a very worthy cause. His new girlfriend. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hey, is everybody busting your chops about this kid making that woo-woo sound? Yeah. Well, good. You won't mind when I do it. <laughs> hey, cut it out, you guys. Oh, we'll talk about this later, all right? Man to man. All right, well, later. All right. Chewy, I need five dollars, quick. Well, okay. Here, thanks. Uh, what's the problem? You know that woman I was serving lunch to? Mm -hmm. She doesn't have any money to pay her check. <laughs> I told you, you can't go helping every deadbeat who comes in here. Oh, she's not a deadbeat. Her name is Vivian, and she's very sweet. She just happened to misplace her wallet, that's all. In any event, you don't need money. This is our restaurant. If you want to pick up somebody's check, you just sign for it. I know that. I'm not stupid. This is my tip. <laughs> Roland, um, I'm here, you know, if you need any help talking to Oliver about dating. Oh, yeah. I guess it is about time I had that little talk with him about, you, you know. Sex. Well, you can say it. It's not a dirty word. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Sex. <laughs> okay, when Chewy says it, it's a dirty word. <laughs> but still, we have to face the fact that Oliver's growing up and he needs the truth. I know. I just hadn't anticipated this happening so soon. I mean, just yesterday I saw him in his room making little animals with Rose's Play-Doh Fun Factory. <laughs> now I gotta tell him about sex. <laughs> Man, will you stop saying that? Look, I gotta have this big talk with Oliver. I just wish I knew what to tell him. My mama told me that sex was a woman's duty. That was the word she used, duty. And I guess I've been a proud little soldier ever since. <laughs> Soldier, you're a four-star general. I salute you. Golden Palace. No, sir, we don't serve Chinese food. This is the Golden Palace Hotel. You want the Golden Palace Restaurant. Mm -hmm. 
Another call for that new Chinese restaurant? I'm glad business is good for somebody. Seven bucks in tips all day, and then we get stiffed on the old lady's bill. Left my purse at home. Please, I used that line when I was in my 70s. <laughs> well, whoever this Vivian is, Rose sure does seem to like her. Probably because she's been willing to listen to St. Olaf's stories for about an hour. <laughs> Golden Palace. No, we don't serve any Chinese food. This is the Golden Palace Hotel. You get a lot of those Chinese restaurant calls? Yeah, at least 20 a day. Really? 20 a day? <laughs> ka -ching! May I say something? I, you remind me in so many ways of my mother. <laughs> We used to do this a lot, you know, have lunches and just gossiping and telling stories. I'd forgotten how much I missed those talks. Well, if you'd like, why don't you just call me Mama? That's what everyone calls me anyway. Mama? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what I'll call you from now on. Would you like some more tea, Mama? Oh, no, thank you, Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Charlene? Well, you are, silly. Honestly, Charlene, I don't have time for these little games of yours. Mama is very tired now. Uh, Vivian, Mama, did you have a phone number where I could call your husband? Charlene, Daddy is in Germany now, fighting in the war. But I'll tell you this. Mr. Hitler better start running if he ever meets up with your daddy before he has had his coffee. <laughs> Mama is going to take a little nap now. Uh, will you walk me to my room, Charlene? Of course. Mama. If you'll just wait one second. Is that the woman who lost her purse? Among other things. <laughs> Where's Roland? Oh, he's in the office. Oh, wait, give me a key to an empty room. I'll explain later. You'll explain what later? Oh, my goodness, I know you. Uh, well, I'm Roland Wilson. I'm the manager of this hotel. You don't fool me, Mr. Liberace. <laughs> Say what? It's nap time. I want to talk to Liberace. <laughs> Excuse us, ma'am. Rose. I'm a little worried about this. Well, you don't need to be. You don't look a thing like Liberace. <laughs> well, except when you walk. Rose, I think your friend has some problems. Roland, she's in trouble. Maybe she was abandoned. I've read about this. I mean, people dump their elderly. It happens all the time. Well, maybe she's just lost. Look, in any event, don't get in over your head, okay? Now, I've got to go to the accountant. I want you to call the police. As of this moment, we are all liable if anything happens to this woman. Okay. Okay. Mr. Liberace, will you be playing in town anytime soon? <laughs> Ma'am, I'm, I'm not Liberace. Oh, there's that famous walk again. <laughs> Why don't we go upstairs? Oh, the poor thing. Can you imagine living in that kind of fantasy world? Every day I thank the Lord I still have my mind. <gasps> Golden Palace. Oh, yeah, we have a Chinese takeout. <laughs> Three orders of Mugu Gai Pan. Two wonton. Your name? Okay. My name? Who, me? Yeah, that's it. Who, me? Hey, hey, how much money have you saved for your date? Who, me? That name's already taken. How much? About 30 bucks. How would you like to invest it and make some real money fast? Count me in. I'll get my money. Hey, you. Who, me? I don't want to have to tell you again. I'm who me. You're hey you. I like it. Ka ching Golden Palace. Oh, yes, Mr. Gross. One mushu pork and three pot stickers. We'll have that to you in less than 30 minutes, or 
or it'll take longer. Rose, Rose, hold it, hold it right there. Rose, an old woman upstairs just asked me if she could swim in my piano-shaped pool. <laughs> Who do you suppose that could be? I have no idea. Rose, Vivian is in this hotel. I don't know what you're talking about. Charlene Luck, your favorite. <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> and I'm offended that you'd even say such a thing. Rose, why didn't you call the police? Because I knew they'd put her in a shelter, and I don't think she can take that. Rose, I don't think this is a very good idea. That's exactly what I said to my sister when she wanted to put my mother in a home. But I let her convince me it was for the best, and it wasn't. They took good care of her, but she was scared. And in a few weeks, the damage had been done. I've spent the last six years wishing I had it to do all over again. So I've made a decision. Until we find out where she belongs, Vivian lives here. Rose, you cannot keep Vivian at this hotel. I told you, Roland, I have my reasons. You wouldn't understand. I know you think you know what you're doing, Rose, but if you don't no, follow... No, Roland, the... I do know what I'm doing. Rose. Rose, Rose, wait a minute. Roland, no use. You cannot talk to her when she gets that way. She has a real stubborn streak. Seven years she worked on that Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Seven years. And that was just to get it out of the box. <laughs> but seriously, I'll go talk to her. Golden Palace. You want to change your order to four pot stickers? <laughs> My name, who, me? <laughs> no, I don't have a cold and I didn't take your order. <laughs> who will come up with a ridiculous name? <laughs> Sophia! <laughs> Sophia! Uh, we need another sizzling rice and we're getting low on fortune cookies. Okay, got it. What the hell is going on in here? Nothing, normal lunch, get out. <laughs> You're taking those Chinese restaurant orders. Oh, I am not. <laughs> okay, so I am. Who is she? Uh, that's Dr. Fong. She's a friend of mine. Uh, she's also one of the best acupuncturists in the country. She also makes a mean butterfly shrimp. Butterfly seam. Okay. Look, you can't do this. We're doing this for the kid. He needs to raise some money for his big date. We're just trying to help him out. You know, so maybe after his class trip, he can take her to a movie or something. Oh, well, how much have you raised so far? $1,200. $1,200 for a movie? Popcorn? <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Pay Oliver back his money, plus a little profit, so we can go on this date. Pay Dr. Fong for her work, deduct the cost of the food, and give the rest of the money to the real Golden Palace restaurant. What do you mean, give back the money, man? We earned it. Chewie, you took another man's business. That's not ethical. Hey, it's a doggy dog world. <laughs> dog? No cook dog. <laughs> Rose, as for Vivian, you know she can't stay here. Roland, I stayed up all night talking with this woman, and even though I don't know who she is, I know her, and she thinks I'm her daughter. Blanche, what do you think? $1,200 is a lot of money. I think we ought to serve Chinese food all the time. <laughs> no, about Vivian, what would you do about Vivian? Who, me? Leave me out of this. <laughs> so, you want to know what I think? Vivian really ought to be with her real family right now. Not a fantasy. So if there's a chance they could find her, I think she'd want to take it. I agree. Now, Rose, I understand how hard this is for you, but what if there's someone out there looking for Vivian? I mean, what if they think she's lost to them forever? At least in a home, there's a chance she'll be found. I'll call the police. Excuse me. <sighs> Vivian's having tea in the dining room. I don't want to watch when they take her away. You're doing the right thing, Rose. I know. Mrs. Nyland, we're here to pick up the older woman. Her name is Vivian. Yes, ma'am. Listen, we have some papers for you to sign. Is there any way we could... Uh, yeah, we can use the back office. 
Isn't there any way she can stay with me? I'm sorry, Mrs. Nyland. Don't worry, ma'am. She'll be well taken care of. This way. Would you like me to freshen that up for you? Thank you. Where is Charlene? I haven't seen her since morning. She cares for you very much, you know. You must try to remember that. She only wants to do what's best for you. We all want to. What's the matter, Consuela? <laughs> Just relax while I get you a nice glass of juice. Would you like that? Sure, but not apple. I'd like to walk out of here tonight. <laughs> oh, God, I wish there was a way out of this. Come on, Vivian. You're going for a ride. What? No, you got the wrong old lady. I'm Consuela. I mean, Sophia. My name is Sophia. Sane as a rock. Come on, test me. Test me. Okay, let's go. Come on. Wait a minute. You got the wrong old lady. You got the wrong old lady. Help! Help! You got the wrong lady. I don't want to go. Help! Don't listen, Help! Rose. Trust me. We did the right Help! thing. You ready to tell the kid about all the birdies and the bees? Man, are you kidding? I have read three books on psychology, four books on biology, and Shelley Winter's autobiography. <laughs> then might I add, yeah. Hey, man, you can't teach the kid about sex from books, especially with the MTV generation. Man, you need visuals, which is why I picked up these guys. Puppets? <laughs> Chewie, I'm not going to teach Oliver about sex with some puppets. I wrote this little puppet play and everything. <laughs> Don't you want to hear it? <laughs> I knew one day my love of puppet plays would get me in trouble. Go ahead. Okay, cool. You like this one? Okay. Uh, this is called Long Day's Journey into Puberty by Chewy Castiles. <laughs> Whoa! Excuse me, lady, uh, you dropped something. My jaw. <laughs> uh, what's your name? I'm Susie Bad Girl. Oh, Susie Bad Girl. I've heard about you. There's a bunch of things I'm not supposed to do with you. Oh, yeah? Like what? Uh, and, and then it gets real technical. <laughs> what do you think? Well, if you only see one puppet play this year, run, don't walk to Long Day's Journey into Puberty. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Look, here comes a kid. Get, get those away from oh, me. Let me okay, handle this, okay? okay? Bye. Get out of here. See you later, Chili. Uh, you wanted to see me, Ro? Yeah, Oliver, have a seat. <clears throat> Look, Oliver, you're beginning to grow up. And as you get older, you, uh... As the butterfly soon turns into a, a, a moth, <laughs> a young boy's passing fancies soon turn to pollen. <laughs> and uh, in, in 1953, Shelley Winters met Marlon Brando on the set of On the Waterfront. <laughs> And then they... If you're going to tell me about sex, you don't have to. They're teaching it to me next semester at school. Oh, 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 well, you know, if that's the way you want to go with this, okay? <laughs> but look, if there's anything you don't understand, anything at all, I'm here for you. Well, I do have one question. Oh, God. <laughs> Is it normal not to care about sex? I mean, like Amy, this girl I'm taking to Waterworld. I like her just as a friend. Is that normal? Yes, that's normal. That's perfectly normal. Look, don't ever be in a hurry to grow up, okay? You're just a kid for a little while. Enjoy it. Thanks, Ron. I will. All right. All right. Chewie did his puppet play without me. <laughs> Who played Susie Bad Girl? <laughs> They did, Oliver, about an hour ago. No, they didn't. She's outside. Oh, there you are. Oh, no. 
she came back, Roland, she must have escaped. It's a sign. No, if she'd escaped, the police would have called us. Something else happened. Well, I don't care what happened. It's not going to happen again. From now on, Vivian lives here, and that's final. <laughs> Where's Sophia? <laughs> You, you don't think they took Sophia? Oh, we've got to straighten this out. Hey, what's the rush? <laughs> I'm home. Mama. Oh, Charlene. You had me so worried. Charlene was looking for her down at the shelter. After an hour, I finally talked these guys into bringing us all down here. Mrs. Petrillo, again, I apologize. And I'm sorry I made you frisk me so many times. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like we're even. <laughs> Sophia told us what you did. You probably saved Mama's life. I was worried, sick. I've been looking all over for her. Thank you. Oh, no, please. It was a pleasure. Your mother's a wonderful woman. You promise you'll bring Mama back to visit us? We will. Oh, Mr. Liberace! <laughs> My daughter has never heard you play, and I was wondering... <laughs> Look, ma'am, really, I, I can't. Come on, Lee, what do you say? <laughs> oh, what the hell? I mean, this is shaping up to be the best Christmas ever. What do you say, Sophia? Christmas, schmismas. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm just proud of these teeth. I can still say it. <laughs> I just think it's wonderful that because of this hotel, we're able to open ourselves up to strangers in the spirit of love. Yeah, and it'll save you travel time from one hotel to another. <laughs> Sure, you've been out in that kitchen all day. What delicious surprise have you prepared for tonight's Christmas dinner? Enchiladas rancheros. <laughs> oh, Chewy, it's Christmas Eve. You're going to have to do better than that. Hey, if you think I'm going to stay in that kitchen roasting my chestnuts anymore, you're crazy. <laughs> Actually, Christmas isn't exactly my favorite time of year. Yeah, Christmas, Christmas. Hey, that's pretty good with those teeth. <laughs> Really, the upper just swept. <laughs> I'll tell you why I don't love Christmas. I got drafted on Christmas, I got divorced on Christmas, but there's one thing that's worse than any of those. El queque Navidad de los Castillos. What's that? The Castillos walking Christmas cake. It ruined Christmas for me forever. It was this promotional idea my dad came up with to get people into the restaurant on Christmas. I had to dress up as a layer cake and walk amongst the customers. And then I had this big headdress made out of whipped cream and spoons, and people would pick bites off me. I felt like Tippy Hedren and the birds. Boy, whatever happened to normal Christmas traditions? I know. Well, that reminds me, I have to melt cheese on my pillow, or Santa won't fill my stocking with stew. <laughs> No, I understand. Oh, it'll be my pleasure to help out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, you're very welcome. Bye-bye. 
Who is that? It's a guy I know down at the children's hospital. Yeah, they want me to play Santa Claus for the kids tomorrow. Oh. Their original Santa fell through. Oh, Roland, this is quite an honor. I hope you've had the necessary training. It's no big deal, Rose. I'm just going to put on a red suit and go down there and pass out some gifts. Oh, no, you're not, Buster. <laughs> what? The real Santa doesn't go through the motions. If you're going to do this, you're going to do it right. Now, let's see your belly. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Your belly, mister! <laughs> I hope you can make it shake like a bowl full of jelly. Show him, Blanche. Rose, I do 150 sit-ups every night to get my stomach to look like this. Oh, great, a taut Santa. Oh, we have a lot of work to do, my friend. That's not much of a beard. I hope you can come up with some really good facial hair by tomorrow. Show them, Sophia. Morning, you little girl. You pinch Santa there again. He's gonna wing your little neck. <laughs> All right, now ask her what she wants. What do you want for Christmas, little girl? I want to stay on your lap till New Year's. <laughs> Sophia. All right. How about a sponge bath from the elves? Get, get off me. Get off me, Sophia. Jolly, be jolly. Get off me, you disgusting little old woman. <laughs> Yes, sir. May I help you? I'm Dr. Norman Charles from the Inner Strength Seminars. Oh, delighted to meet you. We've been looking forward to your group checking in today. Good. Then we get all this cleaned up. Excuse me? Get rid of all these decorations before we check in. The woman I spoke to on the telephone promised me a strictly Yuletide-free environment. She said it would be no problem to totally ignore Christmas? Actually, she said Christmas Schmismas, which I found rather impressive. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't understand. Who doesn't like Christmas? This is a group of recently divorced people bitter over having their hopes and dreams shattered. The basis of my whole therapy is to take people who are traumatized over Christmas and put them in a bland, non-festive environment. Yeah, but a couple of wreaths ain't gonna hurt anybody. Perhaps we should cancel our 15 rooms. What is a wreath, anyway? <laughs> I mean, some people say it's a symbol of hope. <laughs> I say it's a fire hazard with holly. <laughs> And that's the way it is. Any signs of Christmas whatsoever, and these people are going to check out. Well, that's just rotten. <sighs> Sophia, I hope you're satisfied. You've just ruined Christmas for all of us. I can't believe you'd do something so stupid and careless. What do you have to say for yourself? God bless us, everyone. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm just trying to get out of it by being cute. <laughs> Look, we're just going to have to make the best of this, okay? Now, we're all responsible adults. We can handle it. Get hot with piles of holly. <laughs> we need to talk, Rose. Oh, Rose isn't here. I'm Nicodemus, Santa's number one helper in chief. <laughs> Rose, honey, we've got some bad news now. There's been a terrible mix-up. We cannot mention Christmas in front of this group of guests we got coming. What? So, of course, that means the costume's got to go. No way! I'm gonna wear my elf costume or I'm gonna walk around naked. <laughs> I know, I've said the same thing myself many times. <laughs> but, honey, try to understand. They'll check out if they see or hear anything that has to do with Christmas. Well, can't we secretly celebrate in one of our rooms? No, no, no. Look, if they hear a Christmas carol or laughter or merriment of any kind, they're just going to leave. Oh, but it's Christmas. Oh, that's right. And we're all going to be so disappointed if we can't have Christmas. Well, the tree's in the dumpster and I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> this is going to be the best Christmas ever, huh? No caroling, no gifts, no dinner to clean up afterwards. No reminders of Christmas whatsoever. Uh, excuse me, didn't you forget to say bah humbug? So I did. Bah humbug. <laughs> bah humbug. Chewie, every time you say bah humbug, an elf cries. Rose, the elves are crying because they're lonely little men whose dating pool consists of reindeer and each other. <laughs> 
look, I'm sorry. We just obviously have very different ideas about Christmas. I mean, I don't think people should go in to hawk up their ears to buy gifts for people who are just going to leave them and desert them anyways. <laughs> Christmas, who needs it? Bah humbug. Oh, how can anybody be so cruel on Christmas Eve? Let's fire it. <laughs> Was just having a ah, ah. Chewy, Chewy Castillos. Who are you? <laughs> Rose, what are you doing in my bedroom? I am the ghost of Christmas past. What? Why am I wearing this goofy hat? <laughs> Haven't you ever had a Christmas dream before? Never. They only come to those who wait. Now, that's something else. You're not really here. You're just something I ate at Woodstock. Joey Castillos, you have neglected the spirit of Christmas and the welfare of your fellow man. I am going to take you back to your childhood. Okay. But can we skip junior high? I had zits and no friends. Save it for the shrink. <laughs> Come with me. 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 <laughs> My mistake. kitchen of your father's restaurant that you left 30 years ago. Actually, this is the kitchen of the hotel I left 30 minutes ago. Was there an oven in your father's kitchen? Yes. Was there a sink in your father's kitchen? Yes. Then shut up and work with me on this. Hey, it's my pop. I never realized what a good-looking man he was. Looking good. He can neither see nor hear us. Who said that? <laughs> okay, Chewy. Chewy, come on, mijo. No. Chewy, all the customers are waiting for you, son. Make them go away. I, I can't do that. They're all waiting for El Queque Navidad de los Castillos. We can't have Christmas without you, mijo. Oh, here it comes. I can't look. Look, look. How bad can it be? I get too low. <laughs> I feel stupid. You tell him, kid. A stupid? The most important member of our family? You have been given a great honor. You are the one that gets to walk into the room with dignity carrying 12 generations of Castillo tradition with you. So stand tall. You are the chosen one. Now come here, I gotta fill up that hat. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to have your head filled with whipped cream? <laughs> now tell me again, why am I reliving this humiliation? Chewy Castillos, your father was trying to teach you a valuable lesson, but because of your embarrassment, you didn't listen. Now remember, Chewy, the reason we open our restaurant on Christmas is so that people without a loving family like ours can have a nice, warm, friendly place to celebrate the holidays. This is what Christmas is all about, the joy of giving. Huh? I know that, Papa, but why do I have to wear the costume? Because... You can't charge a two-drink minimum without a floor show. Come on. I don't know about you, but I was touched. Okay, Ghost of Christmas past. Where'd you go? Whoa. Who are you? 
I am the ghost of Christmas presents. The ghost of Christmas presents? Now, I have come to find out what presents you bought. For who? Why, for that young fella and those two older ladies and that gorgeous young southern girl. Huh. I didn't get them anything. It's not like their family. Really? I wonder if they feel the same way about you. Come and look. Two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, okay, I believe you. There is a 48-day version. <laughs> Boy, the last time I was in a place this cold, they were hanging up Jimmy Hoffa by his... Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Okay, okay, can we get out of here, please? Oh, I am so sorry. This is the only place we can celebrate the holiday without upsetting the guests. I think what we all need is some more eggnog. <laughs> You want some nutmeg sprinkled on top of that? Can we get out of here now, please? That's not a very nice Christmas attitude for someone who wants to play St. Nick. Come on, let's hear those reindeer names, Buster. Dancer, Prancer, Donner, Blitzen, Freezing, Frickin' Mother. Roman! Until we open our presents. Oh, no, no, no. Can't open our presents yet. Chewie's not here. He's still in his room. Oh. Probably wrapping all our gifts. <laughs> Oops. Well, we can't open our presents till Chewie gets here. Now, he's part of the family. You squirming yet? Yeah, I'm squirming. I'm squirming. Boy, it's cold. I'm frozen stiff. All I can move is my mouth. There's a no-win situation. <laughs> say this, but this has really been a wonderful Christmas. It's brought us all closer together. Yeah. I mean, we may not have the trimmings, but we've got each other. Uh, that's really more important than all the fancy parties and presents. You know, that's the thing about Christmas. You know where your home is. I mean, whether you can get there or not, you know where it is. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. A toast, then, <laughs> to us. <laughs> Yeah, and Chewy, yeah. my absent friend. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. I love you. So how do you feel? About this big. Yeah, I'm cold too. Let's get out of here. <gasps> what a nightmare. You know, Andy Garcia yourself. <laughs> Who are you? Topper. I'm the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You're not much of picking up on a pattern, are you? Look at the TV. Hey, it's me. That's right, it's your future. How far in the future are we? It's an all-gay army now. They haven't won any wars, but the parades are fabulous. Christmas gift exchange at 5 o'clock. What, are you crazy? You know the new owner doesn't allow us to celebrate Christmas? New owner? You mean the ladies lose the hotel? Rose, 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 it was horrible. What's wrong? I just came from my church social. Henry Richards, the most eligible man in the congregation. He tried to... He tried to... Kiss me. Oh. <laughs> just so unclean. I simply cannot ever look at another man ever since that horrible, evil thing married me and then divorced me to get this hotel. Oh, I hate him. Oh, I hate him, too. Hey, who is this monster who bought the hotel anyways? Do oh, look. It's, oh. it's Mr. Castillo's oh. prince of business who drives all lesser mortals before him like leaves in a storm. What's up? Now, do you see? Your hatred of Christmas turns you into a greedy, selfish monster who everybody hates. Surely not everybody can hate me. What about Sophia? Hey, where's Sophia? Oh, Mr. Castillos, I know how you hate and despise Christmas, but I was wondering if you perhaps could find it in your heart to let us have a little celebration. You want a celebration? Okay, but we celebrate my way. <laughs> oh, Spoonhead! <laughs> Spoonhead! Come out here! <laughs> Isn't there anything I can do 
to stop this from happening? Of course you can stop it. Change your ways or you change the future. I gotta go now. Oh man, what a dream. It's still Christmas. I haven't missed it. Merry Christmas, everybody! The freezer! <laughs> Oh, man. Talk about gilding the lily. All right, I get it, I get it. No more goofy cap. I am awake. And I still do have time. And thanks to Inner Strength Seminars, my horrible memories of that so-called holiday are almost completely gone. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda, for that very special testimony on a day like any other day. Merry Christmas! Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody! Stop it. Will you stop it? This is a seminar for people trying to get over Christmas. I used to be just like you. Look, give me a minute and let me tell you this little story, okay? Look, when I was a kid, I hated Christmas. You know, and my dad was a fair man, but... He worked us really hard, and, and he had this real strange way of celebrating Christmas. You know, he... Rose, thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> I hope I don't let you down. Oh, don't worry. The minute you put on that red velvet jacket and grab your sack of goodies, you can't help but bring pleasure to people's lives. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? I thought you people hated Christmas. Well, we did, but Chewie told us about this really amazing dream that he had, and after checking his blood alcohol level it really got us to thinking chewy's right christmas isn't a time to be self-involved it's a time for sharing your life with others maybe if i was a licensed therapist i'd have known that oh, now this is what i call a real christmas yeah. celebration everybody talking and sharing and acting jolly did somebody say jolly oh. Oh. look at you and you're so authentic what do you say blush <laughs> you know what would be fun? Let's sing some Christmas carols. Oh, I don't know if this group is ready for carols yet. Oh, come on, let's give it a shot. Oh, oh come all ye faithful, joyful. Actually, I do. Merry Christmas, Schmissmas to all. And to all, a good night. <laughs> oh, come on.